Obviously, as a Steelers fan, you know, I, I know what he's meant, you know, to Steeler Nation and beyond. But um, as an African-American, he's just a very, very special man. The Rooney Rule is named what it's named because of him. He's somebody that recognized the discrepancies in, in the hiring practices that existed within the National Football League. Uh, he was someone that was incredibly cognizant about it, and he championed the cause of minorities uh, in the world of professional football. And not only that, uh, not only did he mandate that a minority candidate should be interviewed, he went out and hired one in Mike Tomlin, mm -hmm. who's proven to be pretty damn great. When you take that into consideration and then you look at the legacy of the Pittsburgh Steelers, who from the year 1969 to now have only had three coaches, the great Chuck Knoll, and then after about, about 22, 23 years, from there it was Bill Cowher for another 15 years, to Mike Tomlin the last 10 years. He goes out and he hires a minority candidate who comes there, delivers a Super Bowl championship, takes them to two Super Bowls, a few trips to an a two AFC championship games. Uh, there's just nothing to question or nothing to say in regards to that other than the laudables that we throw in his direction. And then when you take it a step further, we go back to ESPN.com and we look at an article that was here. It was written in July, uh, last July, uh, Jerome Max. It was written last July. And the author was Mike Sando, ESPN senior writer. And he highlighted, he talked here about teams had taken a chance on 21 first-time white head coaches and only one first-time minority head coach in Todd Bowles They're coming into this season. He talked about the fact that over the last 21 years, I mean, you're going back to 1997, actually. Herm Edwards was hired back then, and he was the first, first time, you know, hire. That's what they talked about here. You just look at some of the things, the inroads that were created by Tony Dungy and the tree that emanates from him, and you look at offensive coordinators or coordinators in particular and how you're, you, that's usually a prerequisite for getting a head coaching job. But like 80 out of the 85 coaches that had been hired or what have you, all of whom were white, were offensive coordinators. And so, I'm sorry, coordinators, not offensive, but just coordinators. You look at all of those different things. What, just to be specific, 80 of the NFL's current 85 offensive coordinators, quarterback coaches, and offensive quality control coaches were white. And so you think about that stuff, and you think about what Dan, what, what, what Mr. Rooney was working against, and how he still pushed for this rule to be implemented into the National Football League. It's not the fix-all. It's not the be-all, end-all. But the fact that he was so conscientious is something that any minority especially should deeply, deeply appreciate. We have a, we suffered a tremendous loss today in losing him, and I'm glad Jerome is on the show. And my heart goes out to his family, the Steelers organization, and Steeler Nation, and Steeler fans everywhere.